All right, I don't think it's any big secret that I really don't know what I'm doing. I got some! It's dark, but we're going. I got a keeper. Oh yeah, it's cooking up good. <sighs> What's up everybody? It's Trip with Sailing and Such here on YouTube. We're currently right here in Pensacola, Florida, right by the Naval Air Station. Taking off for another three day adventure from the South Wind Marina. Pull up down here, trying to find somewhere to park. I pulled in this marina and asked for the boss man. It turns out it was somebody that I had known from for years from Talladega, the Talladega infield. I used to go there quite often, like every year, like twice a year for like, I don't know, 12 years, no, 10 years straight or eight years straight or something. I went there a lot and just met a lot of good people and ran into one of them. But anyways, he owns this marina and I'm headed out this way which is going to be I think like south southeast headed towards the Pensacola Pass to spend three days catching some wildlife hopefully and eating some wildlife and just enjoying the time out here making a video for you all to enjoy so without further ado let's get to it there's a huge awesome sailboat right there and it's a little rough out here but I like it that's huge sailboat <laughs> That's made for doing some serious sailing. I got the Blue Angels overhead, or they were overhead in practice. If you don't know who the Blue Angels are, check them out. Really cool. Yeah. Sometimes we do a headwind, and it's a pretty good headwind. So I'm gonna try and get to the other side of this, oh, what is this, the little bay or the sound here, to hopefully get out of the, the wind and waves a little bit. Help me out some. But hey, I'm fresh right now, so bring it on, baby. Bring it on, let's rock and roll. I paddled out to the pass just to just get a look at things, see how it looks, and it's pretty nice. The tide's coming in right now, and it's coming in pretty hard, so I was fighting it coming out here. But I made it out, it's about 1.45, probably took me almost an hour to get here. Uh, water's not quite as clear as I thought it was gonna be. Not really sure why, because the tide's coming in, the water should be at its clearest. Uh, but nevertheless, there's a little bitty jetty or something up here. I'm gonna go up here and pull over and just kind of get out and chill, take a look around. The tide is coming in, it's gonna sure get kayak up plenty high, so if I go walk, well, the tide is rise and float it away. <laughs> taking a look at it you know I'm really just coming here to kind of see things today see if it's worth coming back out here tomorrow and it might be if it's not quite as windy I think one reason why the water is so kind of murky and nasty is because of the wind kind of stirring it up pretty bad because it's pretty windy and uh, I don't know maybe that's why you know, I like snorkeling and stuff and I want to see what the little jetty looks like and if the water was calm it would probably be okay but It'd probably be fine now, it's just gonna be murky. Not gonna be able to see much. I was standing here looking around the jetties and I saw some little, like, little bitty fish, the bait fish. So, I'm gonna try one of my new toys I brought. It's a cast net. I'm practicing it at the house, throwing it a few times, and I got decent at it. I threw it in the pool some and got decent at it. So let's see if I can catch some fish. Some bait fish. I gotta remember how to do it. <laughs> okay, three knocks. Grab about half. Okay, put it up in there. Grab the one. Put it in there. Okay, and now I'm ready to cast. Wish me luck. successful. It didn't open up pretty at all. <laughs> so 
So, I don't know. I gotta practice a little more. I'm gonna get it though, I'm gonna catch some. Here in just a minute, you'll see. I just can't record the whole thing. I got some! They're almost big enough for dinner. <laughs> They're not really. But that's pretty awesome. Can you see them? Oh yeah. <laughs> gotcha. Cool, it looks like two. I don't know what they are. Fish. I've been out here, I got my biggest fan. Can you guys see that bird? So he's been sitting here watching me. And I've been telling him, if I catch a fish, buddy, you can have one. So, I'm gonna give him. So I'm gonna give him one. So, let's see here. Oh, yeah. Here, see, he's coming. He's coming, he knows. He knows, let's get the camera ready. Look at there, baby. I think, yeah, I think those are mullet. Right there, all right, here. See, yeah, he's coming, you see, he knows. Come here, buddy, here you go. There you go. Here you go. Yeah, it's a little small. I don't know if that's too big for bait. I ain't got a pole big enough to catch whatever to bite this joker. It's almost eaten size. For me, but I can't catch anything. <laughs> when he's down in the sand, you try to pick him up. He, uh, he kind of flip and he'll throw sand at you. Oh, this might be big enough for dinner, but I'm gonna throw him back. But now that I know I can cast better, I kind of got my cast back. That first cast was just, it was just total junk. But I got my cast back, so I'm gonna head back, make camp, find where I'm gonna camp, and maybe see if I can cast net catch baked fish and catch some crab or uh, jig a stingray. So, you know what? I'm gonna feed my buddy one more time. He's coming back. We'll call him Naaman. Whoa. Come here, Naaman. <laughs> Naaman. Oh yeah. Look at that. Enjoy seafood buffet. Provided by Salian Such. <laughs> I caught some fish. Booyah! <laughs> Maybe they were just bait fish, but I still caught them. All right, I'm gonna load back up. Head back to camp. Well, head back to find camp. Got some signs up here on the beach. I wonder if they say anything important. I need to know. <laughs> like, you go to jail for ten years for being here or something. I'm pretty sure you can camp here though. It's pretty neat. It's basically a little information about it, about old Fort McCree, along with a little map right here at the bottom. You can see we are here, and we we're just at the jetty over here, and we're gonna go around to the cove here in camp, somewhere right in there maybe. So it's gonna be pretty neat, but it basically it's saying that camping is allowed. That's fantastic. Let's go camping. Kayak camping. And we'll definitely come back tomorrow and explore the whole old fort deal. It must be pretty neat. Some old bunkers and gun placements and stuff are still left. So we're gonna check that out tomorrow. It'll be fun. Well, I'm just coming out of the cove looking for a campsite. Uh, there's a lot of grass reeds along the edges of the shore and there's not really a great way to get to the shore, to the trees. So I'm going to look for another option to camp. Uh, it's either this other option or maybe back closer to the, uh, the naval base. <laughs> On the naval base, now, there's some trees over here. I just don't know if they're close enough to camp at. You know what, I think I remember a spot. I think I remember a spot that I spotted. A spot that I spotted. So let's move it back around and check it out. We'll find something. Got to. What about those trees right up there? Let's go check those out. Without falling too bad. Woo! Not too bad of a bank. Okay. It's 
pretty up here. It's really a good view. Yeah, that would be a great spot, actually. If there's a place to hang a hammock. And I can usually figure something out. I can jerry-rig a way to hang a hammock. Y'all see me do it. Well, I think it'll work. I'm just gonna have to work for it a little bit. Make it happen. It's a little farther from the beach than I like, but it's probably the best spot right now unless I go that way a couple miles, but I'm not even sure if that's a good spot or not. So, probably just gonna go with this. But it's pretty cool. It's way up high off the water, so everyone will make it work. And I have seen a lot of like bait fish and stuff on this side rather than when I went to the cove side. I saw a lot more over here, so whatever. And it is pretty over here, so we'll just we'll go with this. Oh boy. Alright, I've got some things, my tools, my saw. My multi-tool with some little pliers and stuff and I'm gonna go up there and see if I can make this campsite work I got my hammock too and a pair of pants just in case I need to put the pants on but I can put the hammock up and test it and be sure that everything's gonna be strong enough to hold it to hold me and spaced out correctly so let's go see so my proposed spot is from this big tree out to that limb somewhere. So I've got one dead limb to cut there, a couple other dead limbs here, and just to just trim this stuff down just, just a smidge, just a smidge, so I can just hang over. I'm not gonna like pull it up and kill it. I'm just gonna make it where I can hang right over it. Cause this is where, you know, it's already clear all right in here where I need to be walking, so. Yeah, that's not gonna do that. And I also brought my Bluetooth speaker from that awesome Patreon subscriber that I'm gonna have running while I'm working. It's much better to work with tunes. I think I've got it cleared out. Now I can hang the hammock from here to there. Now I just gotta make my pathway just a little bit better right where you're at and I should be pretty good to go. Maybe I can be barefoot up here. Maybe, maybe not. I'd, I'd rather not have to wear my shoes the whole time. Hey, whenever I am trimming, I do try not to, you know, cut a lot of the green stuff, the live stuff. Um, you know, and, and if I do, I just trim it back a little bit, you know, not enough to damage it. So, you know, gotta preserve environment because that's what's holding the beaches here. Well I think it's gonna work. Isn't it? Oh yeah. That's gonna work good. Man this is gonna be awesome. Great view. Not much to complain about. So we don't have any fish yet. Or crabs. I haven't seen any crabs when I was paddling around. Or stingray. So I may have to catch fish. That's not good. Unfortunately, there is a decent amount of firewood. Did y'all see it all come out? Get, get a grip, Trip. I was just out there taking a picture, standing in the water, and I looked down and I saw the top of a glass bottle. Well, it wasn't a whole bottle. It was just this portion of it. And that is very dangerous. Shame on you, whoever threw this down. One pint <laughs> is what it used to be. So what am I gonna do with it? I guess I'm gonna put it in the kayak and take it with me because I don't wanna leave it out here for somebody else to step on. I just hope I don't cut my fingers as I go into the kayak to get the gear. Although it's kinda, it's not super sharp. It's been here a while. The sand's kinda worn down the edges. But I'll find somewhere safe to put it in the kayak. Doing my part. So I'm pretty sure this is gonna be my base camp here for the next couple days. And it's kind of far from the water, so I'm gonna have to drag the kayak there. If I want my kayak there, I hadn't decided that yet or not. But what I'm doing, I'm taking the things out of the kayak that I know I'm gonna need only at camp. 
So, and some of the, the heavier stuff. All right, here's my plan for dinner. I'm gonna start with my cast net and see if I can catch some live bait. Then I'm gonna put some live bait on a hook and throw it out and let it sit while I walk around and look for crabs or stingrays. So, we'll see how that works. <laughs> I'm sure I'll be altering my plan when all of it or some of it doesn't work. Oh yeah, and I got a new toy. I finally got a GoPro. <laughs> and I got a head mount for it. <laughs> so I'm gonna look goofy while I'm going around doing this. So for all the people who look and laugh at me, I'm doing it for you guys, okay? So maybe we'll get some good shots with the cast net and fishing and stuff with this. Doesn't that look goofy? <laughs> All right, well, we're gonna make it work. All right, we got step one done. I caught some bait. Now, one thing I didn't do, or one thing I forgot, is to bring something to keep the bait in. But fortunately, my mom sent me some ham in this container, and as I was getting out of the truck, I was finishing the ham, I was like, you know what? I bet I could put some bait in there. So, that's what we got. Where's he at? Come around, come here, where's he at? There he is. But he's gonna catch dinner. I don't know. I'm probably asking a lot of this little guy. You never know, might get lucky. All right, let's get him out there. Get him on a hook, get him out there. All right, I don't think it's any big secret that I really don't know what I'm doing very well when I'm saltwater fishing. So I'm gonna just let you guys know how bad it is, or how bad it, I think it is. So I know when you saltwater fish, you're supposed to have like your regular line and then a heavy duty line for your hook. Well, I, did, I, don't, I don't have any of that line really. I mean, I do, but it's in these little pre-made things with these, clasp and eyelets on the ends so i'm kind of having to butcher it up and i got this little short piece it's about three and a half inches long of the thick line you probably can't even see it and then my circle hook so i'm gonna try that i know a lot of you are probably sitting there laughing like this guy this guy's an idiot but yeah maybe right but it won't be long and i'll learn the right way to do it <laughs> all right so i got my bait And uh, I know you're supposed to, I know it's like best to hook them in the tail or hook them in the, in the, in the, I don't know, in the anterior portion of their body and either at the top or the bottom because it makes them swim either up or down. But I can't remember if the top makes them swim up or makes them swim down or what the bottom one does. I don't know the difference. It really doesn't matter because even if I did, I wouldn't know what to do anyway. I didn't know which one to do anyway. So I'm just going to hook him just, I guess in the, in the bottom. Right under his uh, backbone. Hook him like, like that. He's like his, whoop, oh, he's lively. He's like almost as big as the hook. See, there he is. All right, I'm, I guess I'm just gonna cast it out and hopefully he swims around and catches something. And while I go, I don't know, look for crabs and stuff, which I didn't see any while I was casting it. And I may just go casting it some more. Whoa. Oh boy, this thing's a little, it's hard to spin. It's probably, it's probably something I did. What? I feel like it's about to break. Whatever, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm just gonna go with it. I probably should have oiled it or greased it or something after the last time it was in salt water, but I didn't. We're just gonna go with it. All right, so I'll put him down in the water and see if you see how, how it works? He just sinks. <laughs> He's just sitting on the bottom, up and down like, this hook's too heavy. I don't think I have a smaller hook. Well, I did have a slightly smaller hook. He's still not doing much. He's just stuck on the bottom there. Maybe something our shimmy's easy. We're gonna throw him out anyway. Let's see if we can uh, catch some bigger bait fish. Got something in the cast net, baby. Sweet. Finally. All right, so I, I got the one mullet. I'm trying to decide what I want to do with him. I think I'm going to let him go. I think I would call that big enough to eat, uh, especially with my luck. But I think what I'm going to do is kind of getting late. The sun's going down. I've only got one. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna worry about cleaning it, eating it tonight. I'm just gonna rig up a stringer for tomorrow, so that if I catch, you know, 
know, several. Hopefully I will. And I'll have a mess of fish to eat instead of just, just one. See you, buddy. We'll eat fish tomorrow. I don't think there's gonna be any crabs though. And I like crabs, I haven't seen a stingray either. Kinda of disappointed. Whatever. The cast net's pretty cool though. Cause if you see it, you can, you have a good chance of getting it. This spot isn't really the best for hanging the tarp. Now I could if I had to, but if I don't have to, I'm not going to. And I just checked the weather on my phone and there's no chance of rain. So I'm just gonna sleep just out in the open tonight and uh, get some breeze. Uh, you see me swatting bugs, the, the no seams are out, just like a little bitty, I don't know, a little bitty gnat, like teeny tiny fly. As you can hardly see, they just bite. Well, I had to hurry up and put pants on because the no seams got bad really quick when I got up here. I was uh, FaceTiming on the phone with my wife and my little boy and they were tearing me up. It was pretty rough. Let's see, how I remember how this thing goes together. Well, I had a pretty good first day. Now I'm just sitting down before it gets too dark and I can't film anymore and gonna eat some, oh man, the no see -ems. Got some Campbell's Chunky New England Clam Chowder. Oh man, I just see them everywhere. They're biting my face. I'm just gonna eat this cold or whatever ambient temperature and an orange and some trail mix. Oh, this is gonna be terrible. I, and I left my head net at home. I have one and I looked at it and I was like, I don't need that, it's too early in the year or something, whatever I thought. And it's so small and easy to bring. Now I'm kicking myself for not bringing it. Whatever, see how good cold clam chowder is. Ah, oh. man, these things are aggravating. Well, I'm gonna hurry up and eat. I'm probably climbing my hammock and get under my bug net and hope it's good enough to keep them out. I'm pretty sure they don't last all night. I think just like at, at dusk. That'll be good. All right, we'll see y'all in the morning unless something crazy happens, which I don't think it will. Tomorrow's gonna be a good day. We're gonna explore the fort and uh, catch enough fish to eat. Gracious. Slept pretty good last night. Had to take some initiative to keep the bugs off of me. There were uh, no seams at first, and then I had some mosquitoes the rest of the night. But I was able to stay covered up and in pants, and had some bug net draped over my head. So I slept fine once I did, you know, get it all secured. But I think the temperature last night got down to like 67 or 65, somewhere around there. And the breeze is blowing a little bit, so I knew coming to this end of this trip, even though it is, you know, April, the late April, I was gonna bring my underquilt, and now it's a good decision because the wind just going under the hammock, it really will just suck the cold out of. So this coupled with long sleeve shirt, long pants, socks, and that, and a small fleece throw, I slept really well. Slept really well, and I probably would have been fine if it would have gotten even a little bit colder or a little windier, because I would have gotten my rain jacket or something out and. You know, something to break the wind a little better, but I slept pretty good. So now I'm just gonna have some, have some carnation breakfast and an avocado and a Natural Valley bar. Also wanted to come down here and wash up this morning. Kind of get feeling fresh before I put on a, a thick coat of sunblock. Here my shirt. That's doing pretty well, I might add. One of the Sailor Sun shirts. Boom. It does good getting wet and stuff. It's look good in it. So I'm gonna rinse it. I've got my Dr. Bronner soap. Going down.
town's the fun part. <laughs> so I spent about an hour, maybe hour and a half walking around and trying to cast net and just spotting for other anything else like crabs or stingrays. And all I saw was one stingray. And I'm talking, I walked way back around into the cove and by a bunch of grass looking for crabs. And if there would have been any crabs, that's what they'd have been. But wasn't able to find any. So I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just get ready to go and explore the fort and then head over towards the jetties and see if I can do some cast netting and some fishing there uh, this afternoon. Maybe have some better luck there. Whatever, no big deal. The weather's beautiful, so I don't have too much to complain about. At least I brought plenty of food. with see those spiny little rascals right there that's a souped up sand spur Not too bad. All right, let's go explore. Gonna be fighting the current a little bit, but that's okay. Oh yeah. going very far to the fort. And here's what I would call the entrance to the fort. Let's go check it out. Fort McCree, baby. Got my dry bag with a sling and got some shoes with me just in case I need them. These are the, uh, there, there's some Crocs. They actually don't make them anymore. I got them off of eBay. I forgot what, even what they're called, but I think they make a better one now. I bought this one like, and right after I bought them, I realized that one of my friends on YouTube, I think uh, Adventure Outdoors, had done a, a review on some of the new Crocs. I need to get some of those. All right, so I just walked up the ramp. Looks like we got a trail over this way and this way, I don't know. We're gonna walk around and find some cool stuff. It's pretty cool. It just opens up to the beach. Oh, wow. Oh, cool. Pretty nice. Wow. See some concrete, I don't know, walkways or old foundations down there. Something right over here too. That's pretty sweet. I don't know what was back there. Something pretty serious. Oh cool, this looks like a, a gun turret, turret, whatever you want to call it big circular thing. I'm gonna guess a gun sat there and it would rotate and because the pass is right here. It's pretty awesome. You got a ladder right over there. I guess this used to not be filled with sand. There must have been something under there. There's not about three foot of clearance in there. If I went by myself I'd probably go in there but me by myself I'd go in there and something happened I'll be stuck. <laughs> Pretty cool though.
All the other doors were closed except this one. So we're going in. It's dark, but we're going. In the past two weeks, I've had two different companies contact me wanting to send me some flashlights to try out. One is a Thorfire C8S, and the other is a Through Night Archer 2A V3. Both of them are pretty, seem pretty good. Uh, I think I like the small Through Night better, but I'm going to put them to the test in here. What better way to do it, right? place is huge. Got a hurricane in here. This is the through night flashlight. I think I like it better. It's got a more broad beam and you can easily uh, go through the different modes and it even has a strobe mode. Well, it's time for some lunch. I just got some flour tortillas and peanut butter. Oh man. Nothing super special. Maybe a little more trail mix and some Gatorade. I gotta catch some supper. This one just kind of get lucky and get some mullet. Or there's some bigger bait fish right here. If I can catch them. Well, I was able to catch another small mullet, but you know he wasn't really big. So I'm just gonna go ahead and throw him on a hook. I put my little bit larger hook back on here. And oh well I'm just gonna let him go. And uh just See if I can get another one. <laughs> oh, I'm such a fool. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna let that one go. Ay, ay, ay. Most of them that I'm seeing are pretty small, but occasionally I'll see a little bit larger one go by. But it's mainly in the deeper water. If I throw, I think they just like go out underneath my net. I'm not able to get them. I'll keep trying a little longer. It's two o'clock. Well, like I said, didn't have any luck really. And now I've noticed it kind of getting cloudy. And so I paddled back to camp and I got my phone out and checked the checked the weather. And it looks like I've got some storms rolling in. I don't know how bad it's gonna be. It says thunderstorms. So I'm gonna go to camp. They're about two hours away. So I'm here at camp, about to haul the kayak up there and put my tarp up and uh, get ready to ride it out, baby. I hope it doesn't lighten too bad. 
I'll be alright. Yeah, I'll be good. I may have to ditch my actual tarp if it starts lightning too bad and go lay down somewhere, not by a tree. Whatever. So what I'm gonna do in preparation for the storm, first I'm gonna put my my underquilt up and anything I don't want to get wet, I'm gonna put in the, in dry bags. Then I'm gonna lower my hammock a little bit, I think. Yeah, lower my hammock a little bit and get ready to put the tarp up. And I'm just gonna have to be sure I've got a good clear points to tie my tarp off to. I have to do a little, little more clearing of all this, uh, some brush, so it won't be too bad. I've pretty much battened down all the hatches, cleared all the brush needed to be cleared so I can get my tarp down without it rubbing on anything, and lowered the hammock. I've got all my dry bags under here that I think I may need something out of. I've got like 100% chance of rain at six, and then 70% for two more hours, and then it comes back in uh, at about 2 a.m. for 70% for pretty much until mid-morning or so. So I'm expecting a decent amount of rain. So I've got everything that I'll need throughout the night, my dinner, everything already under the tarp, and you know everything's pretty much good to go. I've got my hammock ready so that uh, rain will drip off of it. This line that comes down from the tree, you know, of course, water will run down the tree and run down the line and essentially down the hammock. So you put a line here and tie it so that the water will come down and run off and not go to your hammock. It's supposed to work. I've never had a problem with it in the past. I also made sure to have the kayak, all the hatches secured, something like that, just so it's not full of water in the morning, other than the cockpit. I don't have a cockpit cover, so. Actually, I do. I'll put it on. It's a good idea. I got my rain jacket out. I hope I don't have to use it, because if I do, that means lightning's got really bad, and I'm going out into the rain. I'm gonna come out here and grab my life jacket and go to a low spot right over here and sit on the life jacket in my raincoat and pray I don't get struck by lightning. Fun, fun. I've been through lightning storms before. Y'all remember the, I think it was the Orange Beach trip. That was a short enough lightning storm. But I made it. All right, put the stock pit cover on. That's a good idea, why didn't I think of that? These things are killing my feet. But I don't want to wear shoes, so. This is an actually a cockpit cover. It's a generic one size fits all spray skirt from Walmart that I'm gonna just make do with. I really wish I had a good spray skirt, but I'm just gonna I've been holding off to get one till hopefully I get a new kayak and I'll be sure I get one that fits. I don't know, I procrastinate purchasing sometimes. I don't like spending the money. So what I do to seal this hole is I got these awesome gear ties from Night Eyes. I really like these things. I always find a use for them. And here's one right here. And I'll just take this and kind of bunch it up and I'll just use it as a twist tie, twisty. Kind of like you're twisting up some bread. And just twisty it on there. I know it's not perfectly watertight, but I imagine it'll hold most of it out. Especially if I get the, the seat right under it so it doesn't collapse right there. So I got the seat back there, so that should work pretty good. La 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 la. Uh, I'll show you guys that I can throw a pancake with the cast net. And a pancake is basically, whenever you throw the round net, it opens up like a nice pancake. So let's see if I can do it. A problem I've been having, I think, is like the water's been too deep. I mean, it hasn't been deep deep. It's been like three feet or four feet. And I'll just cast and the fish will be gone before my net has a chance to go down around them. They need a bigger net. This is a four foot net, which means it's actually eight foot in diameter, four foot in radius. 
So from end to end on the circle, it's eight feet. Nice pancake. Go watch me get lucky and catch some. Oh. All right, well, I'm just gonna walk the beach a little bit, maybe do a little cast net, and then wait for the storm to get here. Success! I got a keeper. He's an eater. Dinner, right there, baby. He's big enough. I think I've got maybe an hour, maybe a little more, till the rain gets here. Let's we'll see if I can clean them up real quick and start a fire and cook them on the grill, baby. All right, I gotta get the work though if I wanna get it done before the rain gets here. So basically, I've got this plate and the first thing I need to do is get his scales off. I don't really have a scaler. I usually use a spoon. I've cleaned a lot of fish in my time. I don't have a spoon with me, a good one. Here we go. Back side of this saw work just fine. this off. Pretty good. Now rinse one more time. Okay, now I think I want to <laughs> try to fillet him with this little knife. That's not going to work at all, is it? Might get a little fillet out of it up here. There we go. Decent looking fillet. So I got two pieces. Alright, now rinse them off good. We'll go cook them up. See how well this moss will light. Oh, great. Let's see how well my lighter will light. Ain't that something? <laughs> well, I got some matches. Golly. I fiddle with the lighter a little more and it's... I think it'll light now. Let's see. Yes, come on. We need to get that fat lighter that I got. Now, it's hitting good. I hear a little bit of thunder. If you guys remember from my last video, I saved a piece of fat lighter to bring with me, and I cut off two small pieces. And I'm gonna see if I can get one of those to light. Baby. But you know you want to light. You know you want to light. All right, let's work on it. Small twigs. Small twigs. All right, now I just gotta let it kind of build up and kind of make a decent little bed of coals. I'm probably not gonna be able to wait on coals. I probably just have to wait till it just gets hot and go with it. It's gonna be a mess. I'm still having to hurry to get this done, so I'm just kind of sneaking them, the fish into the fire, and they're cooking pretty quick. So I think it's gonna work. I can hear thunder coming, so but I think I'm gonna be able to beat it though. I'm gonna keep the fire under control. I didn't have time to clear out a spot around it. But fortunately, it's gonna rain, so. If it does go up in a blaze, it'll get put out by the rain. Oh yeah, it's cooking up good, baby. It's cooking up good. Let's feast. Thank you, Lord, for providing this meal, for real. Look at that. It's just a big old hunk of meat.
pretty good mullet. There's a uh, scale in it. No. That's a bone. Some bones in it. Let's try the skin. It's like a chip. <laughs> Mm. I love fishy taste. A lot of people don't eat mullet. I've never had it. What if it's all I can catch? I'm going to eat it. <laughs> and it's fresh. Woo! 30 minutes. Mmm. That dark meat. That's good. I could, I could. I can handle about four or five more of them. Be sitting here just about to pop. Boy, wouldn't that be fun. <laughs> Maybe next time. You know, how I actually caught it, I was just kind of, there, there's like these kind of deep drop offs. I was just like, you know what? I'm about to go in, so let me just try it right here. So I just cast it out there. And after I cast, I saw a big, huge school of them just fan out. And I was like, oh my gosh, I threw right on top of them. They were decent sized ones. Started pulling that joker in. Sure enough, there was one on there. <laughs> mm. And he was dinner. He didn't know it, but he was gonna be dinner. Look at this, it just popped up. Awesome rainbow. Cool. Coming with the sun. So I'm just sitting here in the hammock, kind of riding out the storm. It's not really storming, it's mainly just windy and a little bit of rain. Fortunately, I haven't heard any thunder in a while, so that is good. Uh, but other than that, there's not a whole lot to do. But it's so windy, just kind of watch the sunset, keep checking the radar. Looks like there's still maybe, maybe some that might touch me, but other than that, I'm doing pretty good. So, just trying to stay dry and I don't know, just hanging out. Probably about to turn on some tunes. Need some tunes. Look at that behind me. That's pretty cool. Looks like it's on fire. That's pretty much the break in the weather. I hope it's gonna pass over me. That's the bad stuff that's going north of me. And this is the bad stuff that's kind of south of me. But it's, it's kind of moving northeast, so. I don't know. I hope I get that instead of that. See, most people would have seen the weather and been like, oh, we got to go. And look what you'd have missed. Granted, I may be thinking different than that in a little bit. I don't think so. I think I'll be all right, but look at this. This is cool. Well, it hadn't really stormed yet, but I'm getting this really awesome sunset back behind me, although you can't really see the sun, but it just happened like two minutes ago. It went from like dark to this just, pew, it got really bright. But what happened is the line of storms kind of came and it split like right around me. Uh, I know a lot went to the north and there's some to the south that might still get me yet. I'm not really sure, but I don't think it's gonna be bad. So that's, that's good. That's good, but I wish I kind of would have known I might could have caught some more mullet. Well, I kind of slipped in this morning. It's 7.45. I just got out of the hammock about five minutes ago. And I woke up and heard some thunder. And I looked at the weather, and it's supposed to rain the rest of the day, starting in about an hour and a half. And thunder and lightning until about five o'clock. So I made a decision to hurry up and go as soon as I can. So I'm packing up camp as fast as possible. I'm gonna try to beat it. So basically I'll paddle to shore and then parallel to shore uh, to get back as fast as possible and I'll be by the shore in case it gets really bad. I'll just hop out and get on shore and not out off the water. But I gotta hurry. A lot of times filming is priority, but right now it's second priority. I gotta go. It's coming, baby. Alright, it's it's 8.15. All packed up. 
So it's 8, 8.18, I'm heading out. I think I'm gonna be good. I've got some lightning storms straight ahead of me. I've got those storms north of me, but they are north of me and moving to the east, northeast, I think. So those are gonna miss me. It's just what's behind it. There's a big old cloud back that way behind it. I can't see it yet, so I think I'll be all right. And also I've got the current with me, so I think I'm gonna be all right. Yeah. So, oh, this pathway. One thing I haven't ever really talked much about is physical conditioning. And I think it's pretty important if you're gonna come and do stuff like this. It's pretty important to be in decent shape for times like this. You know, when you need to go, because your life could depend on it. I mean, it could be worse than this right here. You could have to go. Well, you need to be able to go and keep going. So, because you never know out here. So physical conditioning is very important, in my opinion. I try to stay in good shape. And in the back of my mind, one of the reasons why I do stay in good shape is because I do stuff like this. I don't know, I've got a family and lightning, stuff like that. And I want to be able to take care of myself. If I ever get in a sticky situation, maybe it's not, may not be paddling hard. It could be something else. I don't know what it could be. It could be swimming hard. It could be holding on to something. I want to be ready. Stay in shape live longer too and you feel better whenever times are good and you're in shape it's even better all right I gotta paddle. Well, I made it without too much trouble 8:45. not too bad I really wish I didn't have to leave so early this morning I had some more things planned to do today no big deal I'll have to get to those things in the next 
shout out to or things like that. Just yesterday afternoon I got into a, a rush mode and then today I got into a rush mode where I couldn't do the things that I wanted to do. But hey, thank you all for everyone who helped make this happen. Uh, thank you all for all the comments, all the messages and all the emails. It's pretty cool to have everyone support and everybody excited about the little things I do. If this is one of your first videos you've seen of mine, you need to go check out the rest. I've got several more and several more to come. You can find them at my YouTube channel, Sailing and Such. And you can also go to sailingandsuch.com. Check me out there. Get yourself a Sailing and Such bumper sticker or shirt. That's great for your next adventure, even if it's rainy. <laughs> so, hey, get out there and enjoy. No, it's not always, it's not always roses in these case, but... You know, sometimes it's the unexpected that makes it adventurous, fun. So, you got there and go for it. It can't hurt too bad. It'll be well worth it when it's all over and we look back on it. I've got a lot of plans for some more videos. In about one week, I'll be fairly free to make a lot of videos more often. And I'm really excited about that. I've got a lot of topics that you guys have been asking about. Oh, man right in my lap. A lot of topics, it's cold, a lot of topics that you guys have been asking about that I'd like to cover. And uh, you never know, you may learn something. And I just hope all this inspires you to get out there, try it, and go for it. Cause it's fun. It really is fun. You never know what's gonna happen. I gotta get out, the water splashing in my neck. Get me all wet. I'm gonna be wet in the truck. <sighs> Whatever, it'll be fun. I just gotta load up in the rain. All right, well, good trip here in Pensacola, Florida. <laughs> Thank you all for watching. God bless. Check us out on Facebook. All right. I got to. Oh, yeah. Oh. See ya.